Hello, people of YouTube, and welcome to the next episode of John's Models. I'm your host, John Abaticola, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install DCC and sound into an HO scale F59 PHI. Special note of thanks to Athern and also to Soundtracks for sponsoring this program. Thank you very much. Now let's get over to the workbench and get started. So I have my Athern F59 PHI here and I'm using a Soundtracks Tsunami 2 plug and play 885024 sound decoder. That's the EMD2 diesel and a Soundtracks 810113 35mm by 16mm rectangular speaker. So these are the main things I'm expecting to have to use. I have my soldering iron here and solder, of course. I don't solder without flux because this is the magic stuff that makes your soldering work. And then I just have a Phillips head screwdriver, a flat head screwdriver in case I need to pry anything. I don't think I'll need to use that to unscrew anything. And then I have my helping hands. I find these things really helpful when I'm trying to do projects like this and I have to have a third hand to keep stuff in place. So there may be some other things that come up while we're in the process of doing this, such as wire. You know, I might need to extend a wire or something like that, or I might want to replace it, a black wire with a NMRA color specific wire. Don't know. That's going to be something I find out when I open up the locomotive. And then also off camera, I have my magnifying visor and a foam cradle that I'm going to use to put the locomotive in. So let's take a look at that next. All right, so here's the foam cradle. And like I said a second ago, I have the magnifying visor stuck to my head, so we won't be looking at that. I'm gonna put the locomotive in the foam cradle and we're going to remove the couplers with this Phillips head screw here and a Phillips head screw here and that should allow us to remove the body once those are off. Something I didn't mention but I am doing is I have a separate container slightly off camera here where I'm putting all these parts so that they don't get lost. Alright so now that the screws are out you just slightly spread the body and it just lifts right off and you want to be careful because as you can see all the existing wires that go to all the lights in here are connected to the board that sits inside the locomotive there. So you don't want to pull the shell off and then pull too hard and have all that stuff come out or damage something. One thing you'll notice if you look at this carefully is that all these interior wires here are all black. Now they do come to the board, the factory light board, as black wires and they're connected to specific areas. So what I'm gonna do here, because my intention is to wire the bulbs in the ditch lights so that they can come on separately and so that they can flash and alternate while flashing. That means that I'm going to have to connect each one to a separate output on the board that I'm gonna put in here, the decoder. So, and this is something you have to decide for yourself. So something I might choose to do, and this is something I'll figure out while I'm doing this, depending how much work I want to do here, is to replace these all this black stuff with NMRA color-coded wires, and I, I have all that. The thing is, though, then you have to make your blue common, right? And, you know, like for the front headlight, you'd want to put the white with your blue for the back, you want to put your yellow with the blue. So that's something I'll decide whether I want to do it or not. But in the meantime, you'll also notice that there's a speaker enclosure here, which is really great. This is one of the really cool things. That speaker that I got from Soundtracks will go right in here. It's the right size and everything. So the only thing that we might have to do is use some RTV or some other kind of a sealant so that it sounds good. So it should be pretty straightforward. The idea here is to, to bring the decoder in 
and what I'm gonna do is just do one at a time. So if I take the headlight off first, I'll, I'll follow the wires back here to where it is, and then I'll wire it to the correct contacts. You, you know, then the rear headlight and just one at a time. That way I don't lose track or end up having to figure something out when I could have just already had it figured out. And this is something I've said many times before. I'll say it again because I think it's worth repeating. DCC is not hard. You just have to put the wires in the right place. That's it. There's nothing else to it. It's not magic or complicated or anything else. It's just putting the correct wire on the correct contact on the decoder and it'll work. You just have to be decent at soldering. It's not that big of a deal. So let's jump right in. I want to point out that the user's manual for the decoder has a very helpful diagram here that tells you everything that you need to know about where the contacts are. And in addition to that, if you look at the bottom of the decoder itself, all of those things are labeled too. So for example, we have the backup light. This is track power right, track power left. These are all the function keys here, which are actually labeled on this side, right? S plus, S minus, these are your sound, function three, function four, function five, and so forth. So it's not hard to figure out how this thing goes on. Example, if your backup light is on this side, then obviously this side of the decoder, when it's installed, will face the rear of the locomotive. So you just have to look at it, <laughs> okay? As I was saying a minute ago, it's not that hard. You just have to look at it, take your time, and understand where things go. After thinking long and hard about this, I've decided that I do want to replace those black wires with NMRA correct color-coded wires. So just to give you an example of what that will consist of, I'll use this rear headlight as an example. You can see the two black wires that come from back here go to the contacts on this board. One of these is labeled on the board positive and the other one's la labeled negative. So I'm going to use a yellow wire for the negative because that's the NMRA color code for the rear headlight and a blue wire for the positive because that's the color code for the NMRA. Your common, which is blue for all your, all your functions, including your headlights, has to be uh, the positive one. And so it's gonna take some time and I'm not gonna do this on camera because frankly, it's kind of boring. There's no reason to show you, okay, so here I am following the wire back to the negative contact. So I'm gonna put the correct color code on that. Oh, now here's the positive one. I'm gonna put the blue wire on that. It's kind of boring. And what I'm thinking, and the reason why I'm doing this is it's probably gonna to have to be done at some point anyway, because someday I'm also gonna replace all the bulbs with LEDs. So I'm gonna hesitantly, you know, with some hesitation, leave the bulbs in, because I don't really like bulbs, but this is what I'm set up for right now. And frankly, the video is about installing a DCC decoder and not about replacing light bulbs with LEDs. So the next time you see this locomotive, all the black wires are gonna be NMRA color coded to the proper color wires. And it'll make working on the locomotive in the future much easier because I won't have to do what I'm about to do. And it also takes a lot of time. So I might as well just get it done while the thing's open and just be done with it. All right, so just real quickly, as I'm preparing to start this rewiring process, I wanted to show you something. To get the board off the model, you just gently lift it and it's held on with these little clips. I'll show you when I get the thing off. You see right here? It's held on by these things. 
this just clips onto this copper piece that runs across the top of the motor assembly, right? And then it's like little rivets on here. Once I get those little clips off, the board is loose now. What I'll do first is I'll rewire the track power to the proper colors. It goes red on the engineer side from the truck and then black on the fireman side on the front and on the back. That's the first thing I'm going to do just to get those red and black wires on there. And then I can put my uh, decoder on top of the motor. I'll probably just use some foam tape or something like that and we'll go from there. Quick note, in order to access the rear truck to rewire it to the proper color, I took out these two Phillips head screws, uh, one from here and one from here. This is the speaker enclosure. It's very easy to take it out. You just take those two screws out and it lifts right out. Now I can access the truck down there to replace that wire. Alright, so I just wanted to show you this real quick. I've got my red wire coming up from the rear truck, red wire coming up from the front truck. This uh, black wire here is ganged together. It picks up the uh, track power from the left side from both trucks. So I just left it ganged like this. And then I have an orange wire attached to the top here. And then the black wire down here that comes up from the bottom is the uh, other motor contact. And instead of taking this all apart and redoing that, I'm just going to leave this one black. Doesn't make sense to me to create a gray wire that's only a quarter of an inch long. And I figure that once I have the decoder installed in here, I'll be able to tell which one was which simply because this will be connected to the correct motor contact on the decoder in, in case I ever have to do anything with it. Honestly, I don't think I'm going to have to do anything with the decoder after the de decoder is installed. What I'm really interested in doing is getting all the light and function wires hooked up properly. I just did this just to be consistent so that everything's everything except for this black motor contact here is color coded. It should be gray. I'm going to move on to the shell now and replace the black wires in the shell with the correct color wires. All right, I'm at a point now that I can show you what I've done. I have the rear headlight here and you can see it's yellow and blue, which are the correct coded colors for this. And up front here, all of these wires, if you trace them, go to the headlight there. So these are white and blue. So that's your front headlight. Now these others have a blue common, which is correct, but they don't have the purple and green. I realized I didn't have it, so I decided just to leave those black. It's a little bit less work that way, and it'll still work. Uh, I really regret not having the purple and green because I wanted to make these all proper colors, but this will work and eventually when I switch them out for LEDs, I'll probably switch them to green and purple at that time. They'll be easy enough to track later because they actually go to a different part of the board compared to where the front headlight and rear headlights go. So that'll be the next part, putting all these wires onto the decoder. You got something else to point out here. I took a minute and protected all of the connections I made to these wires with some heat shrink tubing. And I think what I'm also going to do next is to gang the wires that go together with another piece of heat shrink tubing just to keep things neat in the shell. Okay, I'm at the point now where I can mount the decoder on the chassis. And what I've done was I have some double-sided foam tape that I've stuck to the decoder because there, there isn't really a provision for mounting the decoder the way it comes. And so I'm going to go ahead and stick the decoder down carefully on top of the clip that holds the, the contact to the motor there like this. And as long as it doesn't, let me see, as long as it doesn't touch anything, it'll be fine. So now with the decoder stuck down to the chassis or to the motor there, 
I can start wiring all the wires that work I've done here inside the shell onto the decoder. So that's what's next. I find this a little bit funny. I've turned the locomotive and shell around because the the paper that I have that came with the locomotive has the the, the uh, decoder oriented this way in the instructions. And uh, this may not be strictly necessary, but I'm gonna go in and uh, just clean the contacts with some alcohol just to be sure that there's nothing that's going to prevent it from uh, a good solder connection. And you could do this with a micro brush. A micro brush might actually be better than a Q-tip because the Q-tip tends to leave little threads of little fibers there. Uh, but the important thing is just make sure that these contacts are all clean because solder doesn't stick well to contacts that aren't clean. And uh, some of these I'm not even going to be using, but that's okay. After that, I will use a micro brush, which I'll do next. I'm just, I'm telling you the instructions so that you can do this on your own if you need to. But the point here is to make sure all the contacts are clean. And then I'm going to put flux on the contacts that I'm going to use. Then I'm going to do something called uh, tinning the contacts, which is where you put a little bit of solder on there so that when you go to put your wires on, uh, the solder on the wire will attach to the solder on the board and it's much easier to solder that way. Now it's time to start connecting the actual wires and I think what I'll do first is do the uh, track power because I don't have to mess with the shell just doing the track power. So, And remember it's turned around now so the uh, red wire goes on this side this is the engineer's side and the black wire that comes up from the trucks goes on this side and uh, I noticed when I was putting this together earlier that this black wire has both trucks attached to it. So it only has to go to one place. They've already been connected together for me. This is our gray motor wire, and this is our orange motor wire, and then this is the rear truck for the engineer side. So the rear truck for the engineer side goes here. The uh, front and rear track power goes here and then the front truck uh, track power goes here. Okay so I've made all the connections now and uh, one of the things you'll notice is that all my blue wires go to here. This is the 1.5 volt connection. If I had switched out the bulbs and installed LEDs instead then the blue wires would connect on the ends. Just a point of clarification there. And uh, one other thing I will mention is I've tidied up the wires with little pieces of heat shrink tubing. So the last thing that's left to do is to put the speaker in. Before I put the speaker in though, I'm gonna hook this up to my JMRI and make sure I got all those connections right. Okay, so I know I got the track power right because the little blue light came on in here. That's on the decoder board itself. I'm going to acquire the locomotive and try to turn on some of these light features. Okay, so that's your front facing headlight. And I'll check the rear facing headlight off camera. I'm mostly interested to find out if the ditch lights also work, and they do. The ditch lights are on F24 and F25, by the way, and the headlight, of course, is just, you know, F0. So, apparently, I got that set up right, and uh, I can see the rear headlight. It is working. So, all the lights are hooked up properly, so I can put the speaker in now. So, the speaker fits in like this. And as you can see, 16 by 35 is the perfect fit, and that's how it's made to go. If you try to, if you try to put it facing up, the uh, screws don't go in because the speaker's too deep to go this way. See? Doesn't fit that way. So 
Even though it seems like that's how you would do it, it isn't. This is how you do it. Now the speaker's on there, and I did not screw it in because the holes don't line up perfectly on this. What I'm going to end up doing is using silicone sealant to seal the speaker. Otherwise, it'll probably sound a little goofy, but let's just see if it works. Sure does. Okay, so everything's hooked up. Everything works the way it's supposed to. I filled all the screw holes in with the black silicone. And before I placed the speaker into that little space that it fits in, I put black silicone all around the edge of the little ridge that it sets into. And that completes the DCC and sound installation into this locomotive. So I'm going to put it back together, put the couplers back on, and then we're going to go get some help from an expert to get it programmed properly. Okay, so I said I had a special surprise when it comes to programming the locomotive. I've brought the locomotive to Sacramento, where the National Narrow Gauge Convention is just wrapping up, and our friend George Bogatuck is here from Soundtracks, and he knows how to program this stuff faster and better than anything I could show you. So thanks for... <laughs> offering to do this. No problem, glad to do it for you. And it just happened to work out with the schedule, but I just wanted to let you know and everybody else know that you can get this kind of help by calling us Monday through Friday, nine to five thirty in Mountain Standard Time, Josh, myself, and we're working on training a new guy, Nick, that uh, okay. will be able to help answer your questions anytime you have any. So we just happen to work out the schedule, plus it's always yeah. good to see you, so. Yeah, that, that's, it was an excuse to hang out, but the point though is though, uh, and, and that's right. Yeah. Call the, what's the number? Uh, phone number is 970-259-0690. Um, extension 22 will get you to support. Okay. I do know we have a toll-free number, but I don't remember it right off the top of my head. But if you go to our website at soundtracks.com, you can find it. Sounds like a deal. So you can get this same kind of support, not in person, but on the phone. So let's get started. Sounds good. So first off, we've got our F59 PHI, and this is using our EMD2 uh, sound selection. Now on the iPad over here, you can see that I've got the sound selection reference chart. Now you can get this on our website at soundtracks.com, and it'll give you the full list of sounds that are pre-programmed into the decoder so that you can customize those and select which sounds play to match your model. So in this case, let's first start talking about with the prime mover. So let's go ahead and turn it on since I have it muted here. F5 is gonna be the startup sequence. And you're gonna hear the low pressure alarm bell. And then you're gonna hear the prime mover kick on. Now, on your chart here, you're gonna see the uh, purple uh, highlighted selections on here. And those are representing the default values. And so in this case, the 645F 16 cylinder turbo prime mover number four is what is chosen. So we're gonna go ahead and change that because this F59 PHI comes with a 12 cylinder 710. So we're gonna look at our list and we're gonna see that that is prime mover number six. So we're gonna program on the main line to address three and we're gonna change CV 123 to a value of six. So let's do this. So we'll program escape using the NCE power cab you push that one time and you're gonna see program on the main. And we're, since we're gonna select that, we're gonna press the enter. Now it's gonna ask us for the program loco and this is loco three, so we're gonna go ahead and hit enter. Now this is one for ADR for address, two for CV, three says CFG, but we're gonna program a CV first, so we're gonna push the two. Now it's asking to program the CV number and CV number is gonna be 123 and we're gonna press enter and it's gonna ask you a value. So as I mentioned, we're gonna select number six, press enter, and now you're gonna hear that instantly change. You hear the low pressure alarm bell. And now the 12 cylinder EMD 710 kicks up and fires off. 
So now that we've programmed this, we're going to hit the escape button to get out. And once we've exited out of programming mode, now we're going to go ahead and press the F6 to shut down the prime mover so we can do some of the other sounds and you can hear what we're going to select. Now, next up is going to be the horn. Now, the horn is one of the most iconic sounds. Now, on these locomotives, they had the K5LA. Now, the K5LA, you have horn choices four through six. There's actually three different versions of the K5LA. So, having done a programming sequence, I'm going to grab my throttle here. And I'm going to select number four. And let's listen to what that K5LA sounds. That's a pretty good one. Let's listen to the next one. And this is CV120 to a value of five. We've got some choices there and let's listen to number six. So of those three, I think the first one represents the Amtrak F59 PHI the best. So we're gonna select and set CV120 back to a value of four. And that's a nice, good, loud whistle, air, air horn. So next up, we're gonna select the bell. So we can turn on the bell with F1. Now this is the EMD1 number, bell number one. Now we're gonna change CV122. And in this case, we're just gonna listen to the bell first. So the first bell is a range between 12 and 15, and that represents bell number one, but with a range of different ring rates. The next one is 16 through 19. So we're gonna take CB122, set it to a value of 16, and you can hear the different bell. I'm gonna take CB122 again, set it to 20, and that's the 30 MD bell. And we're gonna take CB122, we're gonna set it to a value of 24 for the last EMD bell. I think I kind of like that third bell to represent this one a little bit, but I think we want a faster air rung. So you're gonna see the range for the bell from 20 to 23. So let's go ahead and set CB122 to a value of 21. I like that bell. I think that works well for what we're working on these F59 PHI. There's some other things you can select, including the type of air compressor, and in CB125 is the poppet valve. Now, early locomotives had a poppet valve to expel moisture, but these models are more recent, and so they actually have an air dryer sound, and so we want to make sure to select that. So we're going to go ahead and make sure in CB125, we're going to set that to a value of 1 to pick up the electronic air dryer sound. Now the last thing I wanted to talk about is these F-59 PHIs uh, were modern locomotives. As, as the passenger fleets were upgraded over the years, they actually were equipped with electric power, whereas early steam locomotives had steam heat. And so in order to do that, the locomotives were implementing what was called HEP or head end power. Now early F-40 PHs were equipped with head end power that would turn the prime mover up to notch eight and that was to make sure there was enough electrical energy generated to power the passenger train. Well, as modern locomotive technology increased, we actually have found that the F-59 PHI has a second diesel engine on board to do the generation of power for the passenger train. So in CV-112, you actually have that ability to turn that on. So if you go to CV-112 in the manual, you'll see the HEP or a steam generator choice. So we're gonna set CV112 to a value of seven to enable that HEP pup motor. So now that we've enabled the HEP pup motor with our diesel engine off, I wanna let you listen to that sound. So we'll go ahead and activate function 20. And now you can hear that secondary HEP pup generator. So now when you see these locomotives pass, you'll be able to hear that and know what that sound is. All right, so next up, we're gonna set up the lights. By default, the FX3 and the FX4 are turned on by function 24 and 25, respectively. Now to do this, we're gonna change CV1.259 and 1.260. So to address the one dot part, we're gonna set the value in CV32 to one. So when I program CV259 and 260 in my throttle, the decoder knows that we're programming the function mapping. If I was to set CV32 to two, we'd be talking to CV2.259 and 2.260, which do something completely different. 
So to do this, we're gonna go ahead and grab CV32. We're gonna set it to a value of one. Now we're gonna take 259 and set it to a value of 24. So that way both ditch lights come on with the 24 key. And then we're gonna take 260 and we're gonna set it to a value of 24. Now, when I turn on the function 24 key, you see that both ditch lights come on. Now the next part we need to address is how the lights illuminate. And this is where we get the alternating flashing ditch lights. And these are the what are called hyperlight effects. And these are set in CVs 49 through 54. Now for the FX3 and FX4, we're gonna address CV 51 and 52. So when we go to the user's guide under the manuals tab at soundtracks.com, we can go through and find that we can set the ditch lights in the hyperlight effects. So after doing the math, there is an example in the user's guide. We're gonna take CV51 and we're gonna set it to a value of 73. And that's gonna be for type one ditch light with crossing logic enabled. Now we're gonna take CV52, which is my other lighting effect, and we're gonna set it to a value of 105. And what this is gonna represent is the light with crossing logic but we're also going to set phase B, and this is what lets the lights flash opposite each other. So we're gonna set that to a value of 105. So now when I blow the horn, you can see that those lights are alternating and flashing. Now the next thing we wanna address is the flash rate. That's a little fast for me, so I wanna take that and slow it down a little bit. So we're gonna take CV59, Let's try a value of six and see how that does. And see, that slows it down a little bit, so you can adjust that for your own personal tastes. The last part is the hold time, and that determines how long that flash rate is going to be going on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take CV60, and we're gonna set that to a value of seven, so that for seven seconds, the lights will flash and alternate. Now I like the way that looks. Now one of the other cool things about the Tsunami 2 and one of my favorite features is the way that you can add a light reverb or an echo to all of the different sound effects. Now in CV233 is the control and you have a light, a medium, and a heavy reverb or a light and a heavy echo that you can add. And then you can determine the percentage of that sound effect added into each of the sounds of the locomotive, including air horn, bell, all the way down to and including Fireman Fred's Toilet Flush. So with that, we're going to go ahead and take CV233. Well, first, before we do that, let's go ahead and listen to the air horn now. And you can kind of hear how it's just abrupt. And the reverb is going to add a little bit of atmosphere to it. So we're going to take CV233, and we're going to go with a light echo. So we're going to set it to a value of 4. Now when I blow the horn, you can kind of hear a little bit more of that echo. But I think we want to pull back a little bit. So we're going to take CB161. We're going to set it to a value of 100. You can hear a little bit of that toning off, but it's not quite as strong as it was before. So this is one of the fun things that you can add in, and you can determine the percentages on how much you want to hear of all of the sound effects. Well, now that we've got a lot of the settings set up, we know we like it. Now we'll go ahead and set the address because if we had found something we didn't like, we could always reset the decoder and go back to factory defaults. So this is locomotive 464. So on the main line, we're gonna go ahead and program the address for a long to address 464. And now when I run the locomotive, we're under address 464. Okay, so like you said, I mean, this is just scratching the surface. There's a lot of stuff, and I was surprised when I saw the documentation for the DCC decoder of all the stuff that's on it. Oh, yeah. It's a lot so, of fun. Yeah. And something else that I thought as we were recording this, it's probably worth mentioning, and I think most people probably know this, but you can do all these things on any DCC system. It doesn't have to be the one that you're using here today. Correct. So, you know, if you use something else, do the same CV adjustments. I'm pretty sure that I can do this on my JMRI. 
You can do that with JMRI, or you can even do it with any of your DCC systems. I mean, we we have our YouTube channel where we show a lot of the features of the decoder one section at a time, but we've also been doing a webinar series, and the webinar series, our latest one that we've archived and we're working on the next one, um, is actually how to use your DCC system, and we show the same sequence using three different major systems. So it'll show you how to program a CV, how to read a CV, how to run the locomotive, and so forth using three major systems. So Perfect. be sure to subscribe to Soundtracks YouTube channel. Uh, you can get to it from Soundtracks.com or go to YouTube and search Soundtracks. And be sure to like and subscribe to us because we post content every week and we've always got all kinds of cool tips and hints and things that you can use to implement in your models and your operations. Mm -hmm. So. We're really excited. There's a lot of fun things. I mean, we were Model Railroaders Reader's Choice Award for favorite sound decoder. So try one out. And if you have any questions, we're a phone call or an email away. I can't say anything more than that. Sounds good. <laughs> Thanks, John, for Excellent. coming. Thanks, Appreciate sure. it. <laughs>